Guitar and Excel, C major, A minor scale, fret number 9, focusing on the G note. Get ready and some coffee, because sometimes the guitar is all you got, man. It's like your guitarian angel. Eh? Eh? <laughs> See what I did there? Guitarian angel? No, oh, whatever, Phil. Whatever. <laughs> Groan all you want at the pun. That's all I got. Honestly, I, if you had any class, you wouldn't be here in the first place. What do you mean I stole that joke, Phil? Whatever. See, now you're, now you're undermining my authority. You're breaking rule number one, questioning my authority. You, you see what I did there, Phil? With, with, like a, with like an image of somebody digging like an actual mind under the author because you were like undermining my authority, you know, like as a joke author. Eh? And that one was all mine, Phil. That one was all mine. That's why I'm the one speaking to the microphone, broadcasting worldwide, and on a yearly basis, pulling in dozens of views. Dozens of yearly views, Phil. While you're just sitting back, making snide comments, pretending to edit, and making ten times my salary. Broke again, Herb. Just like in real life. Hon honestly, we... We, we really need to stop this DEI stuff. Whatever. C cut that last bit out, Phil. We, d we don't want to get in trouble with the woke algorithm or anything. No. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay. You could just follow along. But if you do have access, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. Quick recap of the project thus far, noting that you don't have to have watched all prior presentations to follow along with this one, but a general overview of the overall project can help to orientate us. So let's go back to that first tab to get that overview. We've been looking at the C major scale and related modes. Started out looking at open position, which we defined as frets 1 through 3. Remembering that this E represents the low heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling for us. Funnest way to map out the notes in open position is to construct the chords from the scale starting with the one chord the c major chord which we then mapped out in open position discussed in detail we then move to the four chord because it has a major chord construction as well mapped it out discussed it in detail then the five chord then back to the two because it has a minor chord construction and then the three which is the same the six which is the same and the seventh which builds a diminished chord after having mapped out all the notes from the chords in open position, we will have basically mapped out the C major scale and the related modes, which will look like the blue notes basically here in open position. We then jump to the middle of the guitar in fret 5, where we wanted to learn that part of the guitar not starting with chord shapes, but rather with scale shapes that we can then tie into what we learned in open position. So we discussed that position and discussed it in relation to all the notes in the C major scale and related modes. We then jumped to the next position, which we could call position 2, or an E-shaped position starting on fret 7, did a similar process, mapped out the scale, both pentatonic and major, and then focused in on each note in the scale and related modes. And now we're working on the next position over, which is going to be starting on fret number 9, which we can call position number 3, or you can call it a, a D-shaped position, possibly, if you would like. And we're, we then discussed the shape, the fingering of the, stake, of the shape. We talked about the intervals within it, and now we're going to be focusing in on the fifth note of the C major scale, the G note, which you can also think of if we're hovering around that note as basically a mixolydian type mode. Although we'll talk more about modes specifically later, we're going to basically be focusing in and making, in essence, the fifth, the tonic. Quick recap of all the colors that we have here. What is this thing doing? It's, cr it's quite chaotic. We can imagine that all of the colors are something that we can play within the scale. They make up the C major scale and related modes. We can imagine the blue notes are on the bottom, representing all seven notes of the scale that we are working in. We then put green on top of those blue notes, 
which are the five out of the seven notes in the pentatonic uh, scale, which fits perfectly into the seven note scale. And then on top of that, we put the three notes that make up the chord that we're focused in on, noting that the, the pentatonic scale, this five note pentatonic scale, fits perfectly into a C major and the related minor mode, but does not fit perfectly into most of the other modes because this four uh, note as well as the seven note, as we can see here in the B, will have an impact or might be showing up in basically this, the chord construction. So that's something to just keep in mind if you're thinking in terms of pentatonic scale and then adding notes to it, if that's the way, the way you like to think of things, then when you're looking about playing at a different mode, you have to add the note that you need to basically add. We're looking at the full seven note scale and then mapping this in within it. Then we have these basically chunks. These colored chunks are trying to break out our fretboard into uh, horizontal uh, or vertical type of shapes. Remembering that as we break out the fretboard into these chunks that we're usually tying into the related major scale, in our case, the C major scale. In other words, we're focused on the fifth note of the C major scale, which is note number 11 or a G, and the major chord construction from that note, which is a G major chord. If we make that fifth the tonic, then we're basically playing in a mixolydian mode. But usually when we're trying to figure out where we are in terms of scale shapes on the guitar, we're looking at the related major scale, in this case, the uh, C major. So in other words, if I'm looking at open position, I can try to define this shape as I could say shape number four. Or if you want to tie it into open position shapes, I'm going to tie it into the C shaped position, which is going to be related major. And that C fits into this into this shape and then we can basically label this whole shape around that C even though we are focused on now the construction of the G. The G chord being our point of focus, the first of the G chord being light green, the third red, and then the fifth yellow. We also put some brackets around the major fingering that we typically use that will be matching the brackets of the shape position we are in, the blue being position number four or the C-shaped position, which is a little confusing because we label, we could label this position based on the C shape, which is three notes, out of the seven note chord, but we also note that this G shape fits into it. Why don't we call it a G shaped position? Because this G, although it fits into the seven note position, would not fit into the five note like pentatonic position. So that's kind of what allows us to say, look, this is a C shaped position rather than a G shaped position to try to mark in our mind what we're talking about. But we're focused on the G. So here we have the, the blue is mapping out our, uh, our notes in that position. It's outside and overlapping in this overlapping section to the next position, uh, which is gonna be the purple. The purple is what I would call position number five or an A-shaped position. If you look at it in terms of the C, uh, that's why it's called an A-shaped position because we're labeling it based on the related major even though we're focusing on the fifth, which is a G. So the A would look uh, like this, right? We would be do going here, A shape, C major chord, but we're focused in on how the G is rolling forward. So the G fits into this next position, position number five or the A shaped position uh, with, a, with a, a bar chord looking like that which is basically an E-shaped G major chord. You can see that because here's gonna be your uh, E major shape. If I put it up here and then bar it, there it is. The purple is inside of the blue because that's the overlap. And then over here, leaning forward, the purple is outside of the red because the red's gonna be the next position where there's overlap. So the next position is what I would call position number one, or you could call it a G-shaped position. It's a G-shaped position, not because of this G, but because we would have a G shape for the C major chord. So in other words, the top of this shape is up here, 
and you have this dude, dude down to here, so this would be like this G shape that we could basically put up here, but we'd have to play it like, you know, this way and so on, or this way to play the two halves of the shape if we were playing a G shaped C major chord. But what we want to be doing is thinking about how the G uh, fits in, into here. So the G would have a D shape which would look like this. Here's the red in here. And then usually you can play this note and this note. That's gonna be one way to play it. Most people see a little D triangle up top, but if it's only a D triangle, kind of if you think about it leaning backwards this way, if you think about it leaning forwards, then it's gonna be part of the next shape, which is basically like a C shape. So if we go to the next shape, which is the orange brackets right here, we can label that I would call it position number two. You can also call it an E shape if you followed the C kind of position up because the, the next position up here would be like this. So now you've got your uh, uh, C shape, which is gonna be an E bar chord. because That's your E right here. And then your uh, bar chord that you can play like that. But what we're doing is trying to follow in the the G right and so the G is going to be pivoting around that D shaped we had before which now pivots into this orange uh, is on the inside and then now the orange is on the outside so you can play it here so that that little triangle you can think about it leaning back as a D shape leaning forward it's a C shape which I could play this way do it do it or you can have more sophisticated fingerings on that shape and then finally we're moving from that position number two to, to the position we're focused in on position number uh, three which you could call a D shape which is labeled based on the related major again so we would have our C here and then reaching up to this G and this E or here's our little triangle uh, up top if we were focused on it that way but we want to look at the at the G so the so the G within this position is actually an A shaped G generally. So we went from this C pivot around that G to here and then these three boxes right there. That's the typical way that we would play it. So our point of focus is on this uh, box right here. A couple ways we might kind of play with this box. Remembering that as we learn everything up top, we should be able to play all notes and all chords in every position. So I could choose any of these positions. We've broken them out nicely into what four to five frets, and we should be able to play everything uh, within those four to five frets. That's one way that we can practice it. Uh, however, a lot of times people don't know all the chords in this one fret, and we're kind of practice one thing at a time. So it's useful sometimes possibly to play something in open position that we know because we possibly know all these chords in open position or at least a few of them and then jump up to the position that we're looking at so that we can practice focusing on one thing at a time. In our case, the G and the related chord construction from it. The next thing that we could practice is of course blending from the prior shape into the current shape so we can start moving uh, horizontally from shape to shape and we can then bring that all the way back to the beginning of the guitar so that we can then look for ways that we can find patterns and lines going up and back horizontally as, as opposed to just on a vertical kind of box by box being restricted to the boxes that way. So we want to practice going up and back this way and practice going horizontal that way uh, is the general idea. Now remember that when we're playing this, we're thinking of ourselves in the key of C, but we're kind of playing around the G. So in other words, if I was in open position here, we, if we were practicing the G chord, then we could say, okay, I'm just gonna throw it into my mix when I'm playing a, a C. So I'm playing a C, F, and then like the G, and then back to the C, so that I can just throw it into the mix. But what I'd like to do is focus on it more, because that's my point of practice, meaning I'm just gonna kind of play around the G. So I'm gonna start on the G, but I'm gonna use all the chords and notes that are still in the C major scale, which basically means we're playing in a mixolydian. So we'll talk more about the modes more formally later, but we can easily just say, I'm just gonna be playing around the fifth, making it the tonic 
all the chords in the C major, right? So I could start with a, with a G, A, A minor, C, G, G, C, F, G. Right, so we could do something like that as well. And then it's not as difficult to make the mixolydian, the fifth, the tonic. I think the fourth is a little harder for some reason. But uh, remember the little trick here is that we can take then the fifth of whatever our point of focus is, which in this case is the D, and that's the thing that can pull us back home typically. Now, if I look at a D, I say, well, if I make a D to go home, the D is a minor in our, so a D would be a D minor that fits into our chord construction, which doesn't resolve as nice as a D major. So what we can do is kind of cheat. We can say, okay, if I'm playing in a D here, going to a C, I'm gonna go home, I can go to the D minor, but then I'm gonna convert it to a major. Which should give me more of a resolution uh, type of feel for it. So that's just something to keep in mind. I, I, that means that you're going to be playing something that's not in the actual scale. And so for me to keep that straight in my mind when I'm doing it, sometimes I'll, I'll play the, I want, I'll mindfully play what's in the key, the, the minor, D minor, and then convert it to the major so that I can kind of keep straight in my mind as I'm practicing. Okay, I'm doing something that's outside. So we can go... Try to basically uh, resolve it back. You can also practice with a dominant, which, like we said before, could give you uh, it could give you more resolution as well. So just something to uh, keep in mind as we're rolling through this. All right. So let's first think about the scale, and we're gonna be looking at the same scale. I'm gonna I'm gonna move this orange in so I can focus just on. Uh, just on these more and I'm gonna say that we're on this G let's just play through the scale to get it in our mind making the G the tonic which means we're basically making it like mixolydian but instead of changing the order of the notes to make it the one I'm just gonna keep it as the five so I'm just gonna start on the five and then end on the five playing my my uh, the same pattern here that we played before, but trying to make it sound like the G is the tonic, meaning we're basically playing mixolydian, but thinking about it as playing around the fifth. Five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, five. So now we've gone from this G to this G. Now there's no G up top, but you could go to the next one up that we can't see on the fretboard that's outside of our shape. So I'll show you that. We're gonna go keep on going from here. Going uh, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, and then you could go up here five, and then go back down five, four, three, two, one, or eight, seven, six, five. So that brings me down to this G, and then I'm going to go from that G down to here. So I'm going to say, okay, five, four, three, two, one, or eight, seven, six, five. That brings me to this G and then I'm going to keep on going down to this D and back up so I can keep playing my scale. So five, four, three, two, two, three, four, five. And every time you hit that five, you might actually play the, the A uh, shaped G major scale right there as well. So that'll help to kind of get it in our mind. Just the same shape. We're just playing it uh, making the fifth kind of the tonic. All right, and so then we could say, okay, what's the major shapes that we can see within here? Now, clearly we have this A shape. So that's what that's gonna be kind of our main home base shape that we can see. That's what most people will see in that position if they're gonna play a G major chord. Uh, but we also have this way we can play it. We could see this is leaning up. This is kind of like the top half of that C shape that's that's going into our position over here, position number three. So we could say, okay, I got did 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 
And so that's going to be uh, back here looking like this. And you can see it basically, it's, it's leaning back to the C shape like that. Or you can think of the C shape being played like this. And the top bit of that is right there. So that's a useful shape because we can lead into uh, that shape quite easily. We can play just these three, which is very nice and easy to play because if I'm, I don't want to lean back to this one, I could just... And I can mute the one above it and mute the one below it. So that means that the tonic is basically in the middle of that shape. And then we have the reaching up from, from uh, the bottom that we can basically play here. So instead of topping this off up top, we can, if I'm working down here, we can kind of reach up this way. Or you might try to bar it off, but you're probably gonna wanna do this way. So you can get kind of that high end sound uh, depending on how you're flowing into these uh, shapes. So those are gonna be the, the major shapes that we can play. And then if we're gonna be practicing uh, within this shape, we've learned the major chords within here now, which is the C, uh, the F, and the G. Those are often useful places to start uh, if you're trying to play within a position, which I won't do for a long time because we've only mapped out one note in the position. And so my, th my thought process is that most people probably know the open positions, and that's why we're jumping up. But if you want to play everything within this position, which we might do an exercise on more later, then you might start with the one, four, five, because they have similar kind of chord constructions. If you think about it from the related major, you have like this L shape. So if that's a C, the one below it is going to be part of, is, is, is going gonna, is gonna to work the one, four, five, right? So you've got then, in other words, you've got the, if this was the, you're thinking about it in terms of the C, the one, four, five is going to be the C, the F, and the G. So the C, the F, and the G, and that little L shape, that's the one, the four, and the five. And then we can build the chord constructions based on that, right? So if you started from, from the G, if we're making the G the tonic, we'd start on the G, playing that, and then the C is underneath it. And we'll recall from a prior presentation that it was the C here, boom, boom, that's the kind of D-shaped C, and so I kind of mute this string. And then we're going to then the, uh, the D here, so the D, sorry, we're going to the F then, and the F then has this shape, which you can say this part of the G shape, or you can lean it forward that way. So those are the, those are the, th the shapes that you can kind of basically strum around in, remembering that you also might want to end off on a D because the D might help you to kind of resolve back. And so the D in this position would be a minor, but you could construct like a major D from it to get to the resolve just so you can resolve back. So a D position like the minor would look like this, it would be like our bar chord here. And if I went make it a major, I could put this finger down. Sometimes it might, like, it's fun to play this way. That would be the minor. And then if you made it major, you'd put that finger down right there. Just those three. And then you can resolve to the A. So. We might practice more of that later just in one position, but like I say, we've only got really this one shape mapped out here. So the next method we can use to practice is play something in open position and then jump up to this position here. So to do that, we might first say, okay, what can I target in, my, in, in this position that's around the G? So now I'm looking at it, my G as the focal point. So I can say, all right, well, if that's my G, I, I have above it this whole bit right here. So if I'm just looking above it, I can say, all right, I've got, and I can always end off with a power chord or that whole thing, so. So 
I could do something like that, and if I work that into what I'm playing back here, I'm gonna make the G the home. And then maybe to like a C, G, and then I'm gonna try to jump up. Notice I can play open stuff. I can play open strings is what I mean when I'm trying to make this huge jump back and forth because the open strings all work in our chord projection. We throw a C into it. So I kind of cheated, I went a little bit off what I was thinking. Down here, we also have down below this shape. We could say, okay, what do I have down below? This shape is kind of nice because you have these two bars that you know are good. So I know this whole thing is good, this whole bar and this whole bar. So that's kind of neat for this shape because that means this space is easy to play all the way down. <laughs> Right, that hole. Which is usually like the easiest thing for people to play. It's kind of safe all the way down. So that's nice to know. And then uh, within here, we have then, if I'm starting on this G below it, I can always end off by sliding back to that B because that B is the third. So just the flavor of this G major can be felt with just those two notes because that's the, 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 the one and the three, and then I can pull in that D. So that's why putting your finger on this note is often useful because you could start with that, which is basically the flavor of your G, and then you can reach up to uh, the fifth, which is that D right there. kind of noodle around with that so if I was going back here I can say okay. Stop, double stop, double stop, double stop. G or C, A minor, D e minor, G. A minor, D minor, D major. And I'm trying to go back to so there, so you know, and then we've got this, this. If, if I'm focused on this G, then I could say, okay, what do I have around that G? So now if I jump into that shape, I'm jumping here. And then, so I'm kind of leaning back now. And so the, the main thing I'd, I'd be thinking about most likely is, you know, this little shape that I can basically, you know, lean back into and and then go back up to basically that shape which is going to end 
with that typically, right? So I can say, okay, if I'm on this note. Double stop, double stop. Something like that, so if I was to play. Jump it. So we can hit uh, those two, and then below it, I can think about this shape uh, below that one, and possibly try to end off with something with this, with that bit, right? So, so below it, I've got double stop, double stop, double stop. being on a G here so I can jump up here and be like That's one one thing we can do it. And then we might say, okay, how can I blend these shapes together to try to find lines that I can work up a little bit more smoothly? So I might say, okay, well if I'm if I let's try to get to that G, which I'm gonna turn around into this A shape. So that's gonna be one of my target points. And then in the sh in the shape prior to that, we've got like this G, like this C shape. This is the bottom of the shape which is basically a D that leads into this this C shape uh, G right there so if I so if I'm looking at this prior position then I might say okay how can I do this I'm gonna be looking at this prior shape so if I start on this shape here's my little D shape if I'm leaning forward it would be going into that C shape so I could say okay here's my pointer finger right here so maybe I walk up and just do some nice little easy walk up boom 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 and then kind of slide up to this G which is going to basically be uh, moving forward here right so I could say okay if I'm on this I've got this shape and then here's my pointer finger which you don't always have to use the pointer finger but that's just the easiest one to know right so within this pointer finger area I know I've got this whole bit right here that I can kind of noodle around with. So if I was to play this shape. So that now I'm reaching back up to that G, which I could turn around now to this G to bring me back into this shape. So that's, so we've got this G here. We could say, okay, if I have this G uh, here, I could try to slide in 
uh, another finger, right? This finger up to basically my A or my B right here, and then play these two lines up to basically that G or, you know, just play this shape right here. So if I was to do that, I have, now I'm gonna be focused on this finger. And I'm just gonna pull that right in. And just, just walk it in basically to this shape. So I'm just trying to find some different lines that I can go from this shape to the other shape. Obviously, the other way we can do it is say, if I just turn this shape around from this G to this shape right here, then that would be the most you know direct way. Because if I'm just taking this shape right here. So that's just basically playing the different ways of the, of the same shape, the cage system, but you want to most likely find ways to walk from one to the other. So if I go back from this, this one in the orange and I say, well, where's my pivot point to go back this way? Well, you still have got basically that D shape. So I can say, okay, what if I go from this shape up to basically this shape? And then I want to go from there, maybe uh, up to like here. So we're going to say, all right, so how might I do that? Duh, duh, duh. So if I'm playing this shape, this D shape on the fifth, there's my G right there. So I'd be playing the G and then this D and this B. And then the easiest finger to move again would be this finger. This is probably the position you're most comfortable with because it's your position number one uh, for most, for a lot of people. So you can kind of noodle around. I might, I could see this whole box going boom, 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 boom. And then maybe move up to this shape to get this bit in it. And then again, I might uh, move from this shape. I could move it up to get up to that G, which is gonna lead me into kind of this shape. So I might say, okay. Hold on a second, hold on a second. So let's say we have we start on this shape here. So we've got do do do. And then I can do anything I want in this. So now I'm reaching up to that G, which I could convert into this little G shape right there. And then my, my pointer is of course now on the D. So then I could do my same little walking thing on the D. I know I have, uh, <laughs> that I reached up to that G again. So now I'm reaching up to this G. And then again, now that I'm on that G, I could go behind it. Something like that. So let's try that again. That was very sloppy. So what was I doing? I was on this here. So we could do something like... Obviously, that's a really rough and ugly thing, but if you do that multiple times, then you'll find lines that you might, you know, find interesting to get you in an interesting pathways going upwards. And I think, again, going around these pivot points is kind of the way to, the way to start to build those, I, I, in my opinion. So then you can go, okay, there's the, there's the next one, the next one back. If we lean back from this red to the purple, so now we're gonna lean back into the purple, where we have this uh, shape for the G. So now we're getting close to, to home. So if I have this G shape, which is our bar chord, then again, the easiest one to work with, I, I, like a lot of times I like to work with these two right here sometimes, because that's another way that you can easily lead into a shape. It's a nice, easy double stop that whenever you have this shape. So if I have these two, then I can push those up into this shape Right, so I can do something like that. And that leads me into like this A type shape, and then I can move down to 
that to that uh, D shape on this side, and then this D shape up here, which moves in to that. So you don't always have to move the the pointer, but I think just the pointer gets the idea of sliding in from one position to the next. So if I'm in this position, I can use that pointer to slide into this position, which is probably most people's most comfortable position. By the way, if you do get good at sliding in with like your pinky, like you might be able to do things that other people don't do as much because they're not comfortable sliding in with their pinky and whatnot. So it would be worthwhile, I think, to try to practice sliding from shape to shape focused on any finger to make a smooth transition. But again, I think the easiest thing for most people is say, where's my, there's so many things right here. We're gonna focus, let's just focus on the pointer and then slide that into this position. And there's my D looking this way. So do 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 do. And then I can say, where's my pointer? It's right there. So now I've moved into this position. Where's my pointer? Well, it's right here. And so now I've reached up to this G, and now where's my pointer? My pointer's kind of hanging in no man's land, right? I might try to put it up in this position. And then slide it up to get to this, this shape. And you could do the same thing, kind of working backwards, of course, taking your pointer and say, well, there's my pointer. We can also use this position by putting this pointer down here. Another way you can play this, this shape, quite common, this purple shape. And that puts my pointer down at the bottom. So now I've got my G down here on the pointer. And so then I can slide up into this shape up top that way. So I might start that. And like there's my pointer. That brings me to here. Or you might use that pointer to then point to to point forward uh, to the to our our C shape. So now I've pointed up to this one and then I'm leaning forward uh, to this shape. And so and then of course I can turn it around. I can say, well, where's my pointer here? It's still right here. like that and then if we bring it all the way back to our open position our G is up top like this so then we have our G up top and I can say okay where's my pointer it's right there so I might say okay I'm gonna bring it from from this B and then you know slide that B into you know that D would be the cleanest thing work it down to basically that G work it down to that G, then bring it back up to this G, and then possibly to that, right? So something like that. So I'm going to say there's, there's my pointer. Double stop. There's my D shape. So now I'm on this G pointing to these, and I can work that down. Double stop, double stop. Now I'm on this G right here and maybe I just basically turned it around to this G right there I'm gonna work on my pointer again Again, I know that's kind of raw and messy as I'm just trying to just trying to like map out how you might think of going through lines uh, from top to bottom, but I think that's the easiest way to kind of think about it. And if you do it 
log in a systematic way, then you'll you like if you practice any one of those lines multiple times, you'll get fast at it, right? And so you can kind of get to the lines that you're that you can practice. Basically, what you want to do is is keep the ringing of that G to make it sound like that is the tonic, which you could do by as you go through the lines, you make sure that you that you land on that G, you know, from time to time as you're moving through the lines. And that can give you an idea of how you could, you know, build this stuff up.